The Tomahawk are one of the four or five motherboard everyone wants to own or at least take a look at. And so I tried to review this model very early on in the season. In fact, I had a very uh, private uh, sneak peek at it right before its release in Berlin uh, during the 2024 IFA. And that was super, super awesome. And, and, and I could already see that there were some uh, um, obvious and nice changes which uh, uh, would make this board quite unique. Today we're reviewing the excellent MAG X870 Tomahawk Wi-Fi from MSI. The board which will take you by the hand, bring you to your room and give you a good time. Now starting with the obvious. Our board comes with an 8 layered ATX PCB which is more layers than many of its competition and does promise better thermals, strong components and PCIe signal installation, better audio and a longer lifespan. A very strong start for the Tomahawk in terms of fundamentals. Design wise, well, we stay very close to what we have seen last year. It reprises the green fluo punkish underlines on a very military inspired dark, dark gray. The overall theme is aggressive, metallic and imposing. The finishes are soft and varies between sand brushing and rugged texture. When going around the tomahawk, two words will come to mind. Engineering and heavy duty. RGB wise, well, luckily for all of us, no more gimmick embedded RGB lights. Thank God. And instead we have four RGB connectors which treat you like the mature men we all know you are. CPU socket wise, the good news is that we have the same AM5 CPU socket than last year, meaning that we have a wider range of supported processors and an affordable way to severely upgrade your build without going through a RAM or CPU upgrade. Take advantage, you don't know how long that will last. Chipset wise, well, like I've shown on my previous videos, the X870 brings two big novelties. First, a physical one. AMD has reduced the PCH footprint to a single 7 Promo 21 chip instead of two, making it uh, easier and cheaper to manufacture the board. And obviously a broader PCIe 5.0 support, which now expands to our GPU export, something which was reserved to the E-type, uh, more expensive E-type chipsets in the past. With that, and instantaneously, your now entry level can perform and deliver comparable bandwidth levels than motherboards going for 600 bucks uh, uh, and more last year. Now, VRM wise, well, we have 1780 amps power stages organized in a 14 plus two plus one direct phases configuration, which is exactly the same and identical VRM we had last year on the X670 e Tomahawk, which might confirm a trend uh, uh, which I spotted on my last review, meaning that the VRMs this year are either being downgraded or kept at the exact same level to allow uh, a more focus, a better focus on other features on this year motherboard, which is not a bad thing since the new Ryzen 9000 processors are much better in terms of power efficiencies. So if last year your VRM was good enough for the Ryzen 7000, it's actually more than enough for the current Ryzen 9000 of processors. So it kind of makes sense. So in short, having 1120 amps worth of CPU centric juice is more than you'll need to run an even uh, moderately overclocked any of the compatible Ryzen 9 out there. Now the heat blocks are nice and big and fat. They are noticeably taller than the previous generation. And uh, well, for the rest, they do show the very same double contact design and a very similar extended roof, which again is great news. And Unsurprisingly, thermals are nothing but stellar. Both of our blocks uh, stay comfortably below 60 degrees Celsius, but more noticeably, at about 25 minutes, the temperature increase ratio flattened. That is a point where our blocks radiate more uh, heat than they harvested from the components. Now, now let me underline that this is without any kind of active airflow, so it will be even better in your build. And with this kind of behavior and the fact that we have eight PCB layers, I can easily foresee this board surviving a solid decade or even surpassing a decade of existence. Um, I do not expect this board or would want to see this board to be coupled with anything less than an R7 processor. It's kind of a, a humphy uh, VRM. It can handle that and more. 
and I would score it at about 7.5 out of 10. And I'm saying well done to MSI for this. Now, memory wise, our X870 Tomahawk can support up to 256 gigabyte of DDR5 RAM in a dual channel configuration with a single stick clock of 8.4 gigahertz. That is 600 megahertz more than last year iteration, the X670 E Tomahawk. But I do need to temper your excitement here because um, for one, this is a single stick maximum speed. If you add more sticks, maximum speed decrease quite dramatically on a fully populated dual channel. You won't get to five gigahertz, I don't think so. I think that seven gigahertz with premium RAMs won't be too hard to achieve and it's ridiculously fast um, uh, and definitely make this board a video editing, 3D rendering worthy on top of your uh, Mario Bros uh, gaming or whatever the kids uh, play these days. Storage wise, we have four M.2 solid state drive connectors, two of which are PCIe 5.0 enabled. That's one more PCIe 5.0 enabled connector than last year. First of all, remember that for the past couple of years, I was bitching about MSI kind of weak and not very solid, screwless. Uh, M.2 solid state drive locking mechanism. Well, they revisited it and I'm happy to report to you that it's much, much more sturdy. In addition, they also added a push in, push out locking mechanism, which is surprisingly easy to use. Most importantly, we also have screwless hit blocks and I love it. it it's easy and have a very precise feel. Fit. Now, staying on the topic, I need to mention that they all come equipped with the usual thermal pads and they are thick, which is nice in terms of thermal throttling issues. Where I'm less happy is the fact that the central two M.2 solid state drive are still stuck under a plates which still have screws. But overall, and despite my energy kind of complaints and critics, these are more details rather than deal breakers and nothing in comparison to the heavy bandwidth upgrade MSI has imposed on this year X870 powered Tomahawk. Now last and well least we have our four Victorian era setup plugs for our legacy drives. Now export wise we have our usual three 16 slot exports but the most important here is our 16 PCA 5.0 lanes the fastest of them all and where you want your GPU placed for optimal gaming performances obviously hence the metallic reinforcements on one hand and we do have a GPU ejection mechanism which has been heavily improved and I need to talk about. Now MSI has introduced a little lock unlock mechanism here which will help and secure your heavy graphics card in place which is not such a bad idea when you see how freakishly heavy the new generation of RTX 5090 or even the, four, the current 4090 are. Now the two other exports are noticeably slower and can either be used for some extra storage or, or a capture card predictable. Now I do need to point out of a bunch of different PCIe uh, bifurcation because I'm sure it did not escape you that the processor and the chipset do not have enough PCIe lanes uh, to fit in this old bandwidth bonanza. The most important one you want to watch out for is the second PCIe 5.0 M.2 solid state drive. By default, the back IO type C and the M.2 solid state drive share the same pool of PCIe 5.0 lanes. They each have two lanes. In fact, if you want to run the second M.2 solid state drive at full four lanes PCIe 5.0, you got to manually say so in the BIOS and you'll kill your USB 4 bandwidth completely. It'll be totally off. Anyways, don't worry too much about it uh, because what we want to focus here is that uh, we can use a full 16 lane PCI 5.0 export for your GPU in addition of at least one uh, fully fed M.2 solid state drive without taking bandwidth from other components and that on its own is novel for uh, an entry-level uh, uh, X870 powered board. So on that, kudos to MSI for this. Now back IO-wise, well, we got a lot going on, but first we will notice our integrated backplate, always a good start. And starting from the left, we have a few troubleshooting features, including a CPU-less BIOS option, which really can be a life savior. 
about 45 gigabit worth of bandwidth in a menu of, of classic USB plugs. But most importantly, and for the first time on a Tomahawk, we got two USB for type C, 40 gigabit each. Again, if you don't use a shared M.2 solid state drive, that is. But yeah, in all and for all, it's close to 100 gigabit worth of bandwidth, and that makes me happy. Now, worth noting, your USB 4 Type-C plugs also double up as a video output for your integrated graphics, which are now three, including the HDMI. Connectivity-wise, well, we got upgrades all around. First, we get a fast surge-protected 5 gigabit Realtek LAN, happy to see that, and a very fast, super low latency Wi-Fi 7 adapter, which doubles up your bandwidth from 2.4 to 5.8 gigabits, which is more than double, I just realized. But now that's cool. Finally, we have a rather premium ALC 4080 audio codec cleansed by an honorable and honest 320 worth of microfarad. Obviously, recording is perfect and, and great for Twitchers, streamers, or what have you. Overall, uh, the Tomahawk uh, gets some serious upgrades here, both on Essentials and, and uh, the Premium, both in bandwidth and connectivity, so yeah. Big kudos to MSI for this. Now, front panel connector wise, well, in addition of the usual plugs, we do have an upgraded 20 gigabit Type-C, nice premium addition, as well as an MSI brand new Priority Easy Connect plug, which, well, it's not such a bad idea because this 11 pins plug, um, once you connect the proprietary cable, which comes with your motherboard, including in the package, allows you to connect to it RGB fans and even a USB 2.0 plug. Not too bad and uh, a surprisingly refreshing little addition and feature. And I think that, you know, it, it could make a little difference if you have to choose between two very similar boards, which is a trend this year, by the way. Now, talking of cooling, our board has a heavy APWM fan connectors, including an all-in-one water cooling pump, which is about what I was expecting coming from the Tomahawk. Now, I do regret um, not having more enthusiastically driven features for more like a custom water cooling system. We don't have temperature or flow sensor. These are features which made their way on the X870 hours Elite. So there's absolutely no reason not to find it on the Tomahawk as well. And finally, troubleshooting wise. Now I have nothing to complain about here. We have our easy debugger, our back IO clear CMOS and BIOS button, as we've seen earlier. And for the first time ever on the Tomahawk, we have an error led screen, which I know you know, I absolutely adore. This will save your sanity at every problematic corner. Uh, because it will give you uh, a very precise troubleshooting diagnostics. Now, a quick word on the BIOS. I, I don't always talk about the BIOS, but finally MSI has redesigned and rolled out a brand new BIOS, which replaced this horrible, horrific, buggy thing we had to deal with since 2017. It has a cleaner layout. It is easier to navigate. It is clear. I absolutely Love it. It also makes uh, uh, room for the new AI based feature because, yeah, all the manufacturers are now talking about artificial intelligence. And in application, without being a real game changer, it does a better job at overclocking your processor without over vaulting it, which was the main issue. So, definitely an improvement here. Now, in conclusion, the MAG X870 Tomahawk Wi-Fi will cost you $300 before taxes, which is exactly what its X670e predecessor did cost at launch. Well, there is very little bad I can say about this motherboard. I love the new troubleshooting features, the new and very needed redesigned BIOS. I love the new DIY features such as the screwless heat plates and the addition of a new GP removal mechanism, something the Tomahawk never featured until today. There is so much more improvement the X870 chipset imposed into this motherboard. It's a complete different animal. And this is something I've said on the last week X870 part motherboard. These entry levels kept at a similar or identical price, which is rare enough. I've been doing this for 10 years. I don't usually prices really increase. This is kind of an awesome era we're entering. Whatever premium board you had last year, 
This can do everything and maybe even better. And that is incredibly exciting. And now a little word to the competition of MSI. I feel that the Tomahawk as it stands, as a product right now, will probably dominate the market, dominate its competition. That's how good this 8 PCB layered ATX board felt to me. Obviously, it's too early to be absolutely certain about it because I haven't reviewed all the other boards, but if I was Asus and Gigabyte and ASRock, um, I should really start to worry.